Good afternoon, everyone. Kevin Crouch here with South Metro Weather. I want to give you a quick update of what we are looking at here. You can see that our particular area fairly calm right now. Not a whole lot going on, though you can see this stationary front here that has kind of just been hanging around, kind of just bobbing up and down a little bit. It's not really going to go very far. Uh, you can see the radar sweep here updating uh, everything, and you'll see that throughout the evening. This is a, a feature that we're testing out, but it's kind of just hanging around, and this will be a focal point for storms to become strong to severe. Obviously, you can see plenty of strong to severe thunderstorms off to our northwest. What we'll eventually see is we'll see this become more widespread farther to the southeast. And so over the course of the next hour or two, I expect to see more of this activity spread in across our area. So right now, uh, several of these are severe warned. We do also have severe watches in place. Let me go ahead and cue those up for you. We do have a tornado watch and a severe thunderstorm watch in place. Uh, let me kind of clear the field here so it's a little easier to see. But we do have a tornado watch right now until 9 p.m. And then north of the Metroplex, there is a severe thunderstorm watch in place. But obviously, this tornado watch is what we're paying the most attention to. It does not include Navarro County, nor does it include Limestone or Freestone counties there, or Henderson or Kaufman. So it's basically I-35 and westward included in this watch right now. Now, there may be another watch issued farther to the east and south, but for now, it is uh, 35 and west for that watch. So I want to also present to you, or, or at least walk you through, we can get these off uh, the screen here. I want to walk you through the model, latest model run here, and let's see if we can get the high resolution rapid refresh model up. And yeah, so we got a full run there. So this is the latest run, and you can see the storms off to our north, and as we take this on to, this is 4 o'clock, so this is 4 p.m., and this is an approximate location. This is not saying it's going to be exactly in that location at that exact moment, but this is just an approximation of where it thinks the storms will be right around 4 p.m., so you can see those moving into our western zones here. And then we get to 5 o'clock, and you can see more widespread activity. Right now, it kind of shows maybe a little bit of a cluster here, and that may not be the worst thing in the world. If we can get them to congeal into a line, that can kind of uh, maybe at least somewhat change our dynamics here in terms of what kind of severe weather to expect. It might drive down the tornado and large hail threat ever so slightly there. I will say that we continue to look at those threats realistically though, but this is uh, five o'clock. So again, moving kind of into our Western areas, this is looking at six o'clock. So if it follows this track, and again, this is an approximation, it can easily change here, that timeline. But if it follows that, then uh, the strongest activity will be moving into our Southern zones. And then by seven o'clock here, continuing to move down to the South, clearing up farther to the north. And then as we get to nine o'clock here, you can see that most of our area has pretty well cleared out. So the good news is this should not be a late night for our area, but the bad news is that that does mean storms are coming in when we have daytime heating, which means that there's plenty of fuel for those storms to use. So that's what we're looking at for uh, what's coming up. So let's get back to this moment in time as we're filming this, of course, and uh, we'll put this into motion so you can kind of see what we're looking at here. So these are the storms that we have right now. And I want to bring your attention to the fact that most of them, you can see this one's kind of curved there, that one has a curvature to it, that one kind of has a curvature as well. So most of these have some form of rotation with them. Now, that does not mean that all of them are tornadic at this time, but there is wind shear in the atmosphere, which means winds blowing in different directions at different heights of the atmosphere, which causes rotation with some of these storms. That means they are supercell thunderstorms. So that's why we are looking at that tornado threat farther south, especially as we get close to and south of that front. 
you have that higher risk of tornado uh, production because you have those shearing winds and some of those more some of those factors uh, that are better in place. So stay tuned to South Metro weather over the course of the next couple of hours. I do expect to see more activity farther to the southeast here and for our area to start feeling that. So I will have more updates and of course yes live coverage will come in as soon as those storms begin to uh, move closer to our area. I try not to start that live coverage too early not only to pay case myself, but also uh, to not ring the alarm, if you will, too early. But we will bring live coverage as needed as severe weather moves into our area.